Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Fable Stant, and this is Kim. So, I was gaming with my brother, we were playing Empire Earth, this really really old strategy game. Um, but then he's working out right now, so we're taking a break, and I thought I would make a video um, in this little window. So, I am making a video response to this Facebook post that I saw recently in a Facebook, Facebook group that I am in and it went something like this. So it was kind of like a rant on cute decks or cute tarot decks or cute things in general. Um, this person said that she's a grumpy old witch and she doesn't really understand the deal with fluffy, cute decks, you know, decks like Happy Tarot or Crystal Unicorn Tarot or even my tarot, we have the Panna Tarot or anything that's cute and fluffy and this person doesn't really understand like it's you know, the tarot should be serious, it should be deep, and should be like, mm, hardcore, so blah blah blah. And that sparked a big discussion, and it was it turned out to be one of the most controversial posts ever, which was interesting. But just to recap some of the ideas and some of the things that were being said in that thread, I think there was like a group of people saying that, yeah, like I'm just, you know, just agreeing, right? Yeah, I don't really understand the point of those cute decks either. Um, I want my tarot practice to be very serious. If it's not serious and it doesn't mean anything. So I think the underlying message here is that cute decks are shallow. And I have something to say about that, obviously. And there was also under that thread, there was like a, another group of people kind of just saying that, you know, each to their own, you like what you like. If a deck works for you, then it doesn't really matter what other people think. If it makes you happy, if it makes it, if, if it's meaningful for you, if it helps your practice, if it's unique to you, blah blah blah, then just use it by all means. And then there's like a another camp of people kind of defending the cute. So first of all, I just like I just want to begin by saying that I'm not making a rant on that rant. I'm not making this video to trash that person or whoever. Um, I'm not like camp cute versus camp serious or something. I just want to like share with you some ideas so so yeah don't 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 get salty <laughs> or or something i don't know so with that out of the way i just want to say like obviously i don't really care what decks you choose to use i don't care what decks you like because that's your preference is this literally just personal preference i don't understand why this is like a big issue i mean like a lot of people already said each to their own if it works for you if it's something that speaks to you if this is a deck that really brings meaning and value and inspiration and and um, depth and wisdom to your practice it isn't really what the face of the deck looks like it's tarot the system but tarot is universal the archetypes are universal the archetypes may have different colors different shapes make they may take different forms and they may become represented in different ways even when they're represented in very fluffy uh highly positive maybe not a shred of negativity um seems to sk skip over the negative stuff there is a place for that deck you know there's you know different times we encounter different situations different people different relationships we have different questions and and you know i'm sure a lot of us would go to different decks for different types of questions sometimes we want to ask a happy deck for something something we want to ask a very dark deck a question to do uh to accomplish a specific thing so that is the beauty of having diversity in decks. You know, you can choose so many different decks. You can pick up different decks at different times for different kind of questions. And they're just like a deck out there for everyone, anyone, any kind of interest, any kind of perspective. So yeah, it's just you choose whatever you want. I choose whatever I want. I could have an eclectic collection of decks and I just pick whatever that speaks to me at the moment or whatever. So each to their own, right? Doesn't really matter. Uh, that's what I'm saying. So that's kind of my first point um, that, that I'm trying to make. However, the idea that cute equals shallow, um, that I strongly disagree with. I disagree with the fact that you're saying that it can't coexist because cuteness and depth can definitely coexist. Something looking very sophisticated and serious and dark could also be very shallow and superficial. I just think that it's wrong to judge a deck or judge something based on their appearance because Appearance, while well, it can inform us and maybe give give us an idea of what it potentially could be or it could kind of like, 
you know, it could be like a stereotype. But ultimately, we need to look at the content of the deck or we need, when we judge something and examine something, we need to look at the actual content of the thing. So my point is appearance versus reality. Sometimes they don't really align and you really have to look at the big picture. I mean, you could have a cute deck and it's shallow as fuck. I mean, that's totally true. But there are also a lot of cute decks that are very well thought out, um, very well constructed, and there's a lot of content to it. <clears throat> <clears throat> there could also be serious decks and with a serious purpose with serious content very deep very deep all that jazz there could also be like a classical very classical looking deck but it's also shallow as fuck and pretentious as fuck you know it goes both ways i'm just saying like there's like a lot of diversity in in, in the universe of decks but anyway going back to the idea that cuneus can be can be deep or can be serious and i actually just saw another facebook post um saying that do you think tarot should be fun or serious and i don't understand why these two things can coexist something could be really fun and something could be very serious for example personally when i'm shadow working when i'm working through some of my issues when i'm examining my own narratives when i'm using tarot to self-reflect and problem solve and try to move forward it's very serious work right it's like take sometimes it takes a lot of courage to be able to face up to those things and you're especially the junk in your soul in the landscapes landscapes of your psychology but at the same time it could be a fun thing to do it could be very thrilling to do because you know you're making progress on your spiritual journey you know you're making progress in clearing out the trash that's in your in your psyche you're you're making you're improving as a person you're leveling up so it could be something fun to do i feel like just because something is fun it doesn't need it doesn't need to mean that it's shallow or it doesn't offer you any value um you know it really depends on how you personally engage with the activity right so that's one thing you know i understand why people think why, why people see cute and they tend to think it's shallow because when you see something cute generally you know it reminds you it reminds you of innocence right it's usually very childlike it's the hallmark of youth and in a way, I understand why people can see it as shallow because usually without some years on you, you know, you kind of know less, but that's also like, I think part of it can be true. Part of it could also be, um, you know, just ageism. <laughs> For those of you who are maybe watching this video, you're thinking like, what is the value of cuteness? Like, isn't it just cute? I mean, ah, if it makes you happy, then yay. Yeah, I mean, just going back to what I said, I don't think like cuteness exists as a, only as that stereotype in your mind only as something like just happy and just like one dimensionally happy cuteness can intersect with a lot of different things you know like sometimes if you just think of some of the maybe some of the random videos you see on the internet sometimes kids says the darnest wisest things yeah you know appearance versus reality right and when it comes to cuteness um i've been talking to zara from kitten chops underscore illustrations her um, playful heart tarot is launching soon another amazing cute wise deck um on kickstarter october 5th so mark your calendars but we're both camp cute and we've been talking about cuteness a lot and we're, we're talking about how people don't tend to correlate cuteness with spirituality they don't really put cute and um wisdom together don't really see cuteness can offer you any value when it comes to maybe personal exploration or when you're trying to be deep um people usually don't put these things together um you know we were talking about a lot of ideas regarding cuteness and in one of her lives in zara's life from kitten chops she mentioned that when you see something cute it goes straight to your heart chakra and that really that was really really interesting for me and we we had ended up having this discussion about cuteness and heart chakra from my understanding um you know from our discussion cuteness something something cute isn't isn't just like you know just like happy and fluffy and you just bypass all the sorrows and and you don't look at the dark stuff you don't look at the serious stuff you know you're just bypassing i mean that could definitely happen with cute decks i mean i totally acknowledge that but cuteness is so much more um you know when something is cute when something invokes that sense of oh oh i mean just think of like when you look at a kitten or a dog or, or your baby or something really cute it's not just like i mean in a way it makes you forget about your sorrows or stress or whatever but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're bypassing i think cuteness has this kind of power right it goes to your heart chakra because 
when you see something cuteness or when you engage with kind of the ideas sort of encapsulated by cuteness, right? Playfulness, imagination, childlikeness, openness. It really is, it's, it's, it's kind of like a, the space of cuteness. Uh, let me just put it that way. The space of cuteness is a space of openness, right? It's a space of vulnerability. Because when you see something cute, usually it's something baby-like, something kind of that look harmless, right? You know, white eyes, uh, awkward movements, and they look kind of harmless. And I think you you just, you feel so open and so happy because you don't see that thing as a threat. You don't see that thing as a, as a, as a threat. You wouldn't put your guard up. You wouldn't defend against it. You wouldn't, it's kind of like your ego wouldn't get in the way, right? Because you don't need to guard against this, against this thing. Like, why would this cute thing hurt you? Why would this cute thing be a damaging thing to, for you? Why would it sabotage you? It's so harmless. So it opens up your heart chakra from a spiritual and energetic perspective. When you see something cute, um, you know, for example, if you look at cute decks like Happy Tarot, I have it here. I have a couple other cute decks, maybe Hello Kitty Tarot, uh, maybe Paulina Tarot, um, Crystal Unicorn Tarot, My Way of the Panda Tarot. When you look at other cute decks, um, it has this opening effect because you don't, they're so cute. Like they're completely harmless. They're, they're not predators, right? So it allows you to drop down your guard and then allows you to enter the space of vulnerability. And I think to say that's not deep or not serious is really misleading and misguiding because when you're in that space of openness and playfulness, it's very easy to heal. It's really easy because you're not, you know, it's, and it's a great place to do intense spiritual work and to find inner peace, etc. Because you're just really open to any wisdom that may show up. You are more open to accept and look at and confront the difficult feelings inside of you. And because you're open, and maybe because it is presented to you in such a cute manner, literally maybe it's just like Pocky and Lollipop, because it's not presented to you in such a scary way. You, it, it, you can accept it more easily. You can acknowledge that more easily. You kind of, kind of just shed the layers of the all the fear and anxiety and the racism that's that you sort of attached to maybe that concept you're trying to overcome, that memory you're trying to overcome. When it's presented to you, something so harmless, something so innocent, it's very easy to accept. It's easy to work with. So that's one thing. I think that's the power of cuteness. Cuteness really allows you to. Um, not bypass the difficult emotions, but it lowers your guard. It it um, it kind of changes the energy to something that's not so dangerous, or allows you to perceive it as something that isn't that that's not dangerous. So that's one thing. And I think when it comes to when it comes to cuteness, and I think cute tarot decks specifically. I think a lot of people use cute decks to do inner child healing, inner child work. Let's face it, like when we're doing inner child work, when we're working with our childhood, that's often the space where we need to do intense shadow work with because a lot of the things that we had to undo and and deconstruct and really examine, a lot of things that conditioned us to think the way we are, the, the, uh, a lot of the conditions of fear and negativity, they really came from our childhood and then inner child work is not easy, right? It's not an easy feat. It's not an easy space to be in, especially, you know, we have to confront the, 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 the fear and the helplessness that you maybe experience as a child that you have to undo the conditions that you went through as a child. And a lot of people use cute decks for that because it's that, it's that space of innocence, but when, when it's sort of, it's, it gets flung into the harshness of reality. Um, anyway, that's a tangent, but you know what I mean? Like when we do inner child work, a lot of people use cute decks to do inner child work. And that's often where we do a lot of heavy lifting when it comes to shadow working. So to say that that work is not serious, to say that cuteness can be a segue to something deep and meaningful, I just think that's something ignorant to say. So, and if you're, if you, if you were thinking that, if you used to think that, I hope I'm challenging you to maybe consider um, otherwise. But I also want to acknowledge that you know I totally understand that cuteness isn't for everyone. If you don't like it, then you don't like it, and honestly, it doesn't really matter. I'm just like. Saying cuteness has a lot of value to it as well, just like anything, anything could have a lot of value. Um, each to their own. I mean, if you don't like cuteness, like that's fine. It's like I, I find goddess decks don't really speak to me. 
a lot just because I don't really identify with the divine feminine archetype. Never been that person. I've also don't really identify with the idea of a woman. I mean, I'm still like a straight, um, very vanilla, cisgendered, female, Asian person, but I just never really identify with the archetype of a woman, of divine feminine, so I wouldn't really choose a goddess theme deck. Just like maybe you never identify with a playful inner child archetype. Um, I mean, I think everybody has like an inner child, but maybe it's not a strong archetype within your personality. That's totally fine. Maybe that's why you don't like Cunis. That's fine. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, like going back to Cunis, the idea of Cunis, like Cunis, the space of Cunis is the space of playfulness. It's a space of imagination, right? When we think of childhood, we think of adventure, imagination. We think of the infinite potential that comes with the world of play. It's like a, a world of pretend. I was just talking to this about uh, with, with uh, I was just talking to this, I, I was talking about this with Zara, um, you know, we were just, she was really passionate about the idea of, um, if you're watching, hi, um, you know, about this idea of pretend, right, when you're playing, when you're pretending, when you're, you know, when you're not, when you're pretending, you're, when you're activating your imagination to play and pretend, you're not committed to the reality in front of you, you're always in the moment, and you're always exercising your power, because if you don't like this reality, next right thank you next if you don't like the scenario let's imagine and pretend to be in another one so if you translate that to working magic or working manifesting things in your life that's very powerful because you're not committed to you know you don't you're not resp you're not obligated to kind of keep a reality that you don't like which is something that's not associated with childhood or an inner child archetype or something cute it's associated with adulthood or as having a serious life and that's something we're actively trying to undo and walk away from in spiritual work. So I just find it ironic that people are criticizing how cuteness can be deep and spiritual, but in a way that's something that they are trying to go towards. So yeah, cuteness, youthfulness, playfulness, it's a space of um, infinite potential. It's a place where you are not burdened by your limiting beliefs. Like I said, it's something that's associated with adulthood or something that's serious looking and <clears throat> my throat is dying I don't know why my point is cute um, can definitely coexist with depth and wisdom I think I know cuteness is usually associated with youthfulness and childhood and shallowness um, I can totally I can totally see that but just because something is cute doesn't mean it's shallow just in the same way that just because something something is classical and scary looking um, doesn't mean it's sophisticated or has great content, you know, so appearance can be deceiving. So yeah, again, just to recap, um, if you don't like your decks, that's fine. You can choose whatever decks that you want. I have no problems with it, but I think when it comes to cuteness and the idea of cuteness and the ideas surrounding cuteness, I think there is a lot that we can explore. I think this is an underexplored area. I think this is something that we can actively, actively activate. Uh, it's something that we can really look into because it's so it's so transformative because when you really enter that space of you know infinite cute potential cuteness as a sacred space hashtag it's 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 just I think it's really powerful because it transcends age it transcends time it transcends at least for me you know it's something very powerful if it doesn't speak to you if it doesn't resonate with you that way um that's fine <laughs> totally not bitter about it but you know what I mean like, it's something that's very, you know, I'm really into it. I think we need to look into this more as a spiritual community. I think cuteness um, is, a, is a very, is, is, is an underlooked area. Just because, I think it's because it's so harmless. People usually don't take it seriously. And you can take that from me. Um, I have experienced this my whole life. <laughs> when you look as cute as I am. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Totally kidding. Yeah, I'm rambling now. Hope you resonated with this video and hope it gave you something new to think about or maybe you disagree with me. Uh, let me know in the comments. These are my thoughts regarding cute decks and how cute decks can, can't can be serious. Honestly, I don't want, I don't, I don't, I don't, honestly don't really know why this is controversial. I mean, it's like without even all like all that discussion and just like, you like what you like. I mean, if you find absolute meaning, if you, ha if you find enlightenment in like, 
an animal cracker, then who is to say that animal cracker is invalid? You know, it's 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 the experience that you have as an individual. It's the results that you have achieved. I mean, let's look at the practicalities, right? It's like, it's like if you've really achieved enlightenment through an animal cracker or like a spaghetti, like you know those letter spaghetti thingy. It's like it's like well, good for you. You know, tarot is just a tool, right? It's just like a tool that we use to reflect our inner wisdom. So it really is about what's on the inside. <gasps> is that a deep ending? I don't know. But let me know in the comments. <gasps> Until then, see you next time. Bye.